Hi everybody, today we're doing something real. This is a real wedding cake and will be delivered to real wedding. I would like to thank to this wedding couple, ANJ, so being so kind to let me to share all this information with you. I'd like to start from something irrelevant, but there is a similarity into it. When you go to uh, movie theaters, you know that it's not real. This is uh, made by actors, act actresses, and then directors, studios, and all those stuff. Uh, but once the movie starts, you get into it and you believe in what's happening. So you like or dislike what's happening, you like or dislike the, the people in there, etc. So uh, why it's happening? Because we don't see the things that which is happening behind the scene. You must be asking to me now, what's the relation between wedding cakes and, and movies? What is to do together? Uh, because wedding cakes also has a behind the scenes section. So this video today will be about that part. We have to deal, especially this size wedding cake, which is about five tier. And altogether, I'm guessing about will be end up about 60 kilo, maybe between 50, 60 kilo. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not possible to calculate exactly how much is gonna be the weight of this wedding cake before it's finished. You don't even have the scale to put it on and find out. You just have to feel it, how heavy is it, all right? So in this cake, with this size, there is things to be dealt. The weight, as I said, has to be considered and the construction what we're putting inside the wedding cake has to be good enough to deal with that weight so it doesn't have any disaster. Assembling, another issue, because uh, sometimes we do decorations on the, each part of the cake separately and we join them together later on. Sometimes we do the decorations all in once on the cake, but this case is a bit different. So how we deal with that uh, that we don't uh, damage the cake while we're putting together. And then uh, the other issue, of course, transportation. You may not have the same size of the, of the truck, so you will have a possibility of limited uh, height. And then how to deal with this, even the cake is so large and you can put it in different parts and join together in the event place. So this is already another thing. When you look at this drawing, I made this drawing uh, a couple of weeks ago when a customer approached me, they come up with a certain ideas. They want to have, for example, the, they, can, they can express the colors what they're looking for, they can express the, the, the flowers, etc., and then general concept and everything. For example, I always ask the customer, uh, how high you want the cake first? Because when we go into details, that uh, this is important to start from the, the size. That that's why I, I have uh, indication for customer, they're looking for something that size, and I start drawing that, uh, putting that one point here, one point up there, and draw everything inside there. Customer doesn't come always the final design, so we have to add our own, uh, our own ideas, combining with the customer ideas, to come up with the final design. So this has come out like that. And also, uh, what you see over here, there's different components. You see that the cake is completely covered with the piping here. There's a cake here, gold plated. There's another one with the quilting design. There's another with the initials on a gold uh, plated uh, oval plaque. And then the sort of finished with the matching uh, pipings around. And then there is uh, roses in bouquets. There is uh, butterflies. There is also gazebo and sitting on the cake. So all those things is not my issue today for this tutorial. My tutorial today is about how to deal with all those things, how to put it together, how to arrange it, everything. So uh, all those little bits and pieces comes together to uh, achieving the final uh, product, final result. So this will be uh, a bit of like a step-by-step uh, -step method. So I'm gonna make very small, short, uh, short uh, steps that show you one by one. And also I would like to invite you to take note while you're watching this video because it is important what you do first, what you do after. I said it all the time. And also uh, that uh, if you have intention to do this kind of wedding cakes, give a lot of uh, attention to uh, inside of the cake, like how to build this construction that the cake doesn't drop. So all those things what we're talking about now, it's combination of them, it shows our responsibility. I always relate that uh, being a cake decorator dealing with someone's most important event. It's like very similar to like flying the uh, uh, 
commercial airline. So you have a couple of hundred people behind that you 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 have the obligation. You have to make sure that you you landing in the next place. And the wedding cake decorators are also important for us as a responsibility. Same as that, we have a couple of hundred people in the event that make sure that they're all happy at the end of the wedding. Because if something happened to wedding, it's a uh, it's not going to be remembered as a nice wedding. It will be remembered as a the wedding with the disaster because the cake was not there. So that's why it's important. This tutorial is like a, a going into details of those kind of responsible acts. I'm going to start now constructing the wedding. So all the parts are ready. So there's nothing to actually produce here. Uh, this, this is important in this tutorial, how to combine together, how to arrange things together. What's the thinking behind? So this is what we're going to talk about today. Starting from the very base of the cake, I actually use a tabletop because it's very nice and strong. And then I have also a bit of grip underneath. So it will be very secure to go for this one. Uh, if you don't have a tabletop, of course, you have to use uh, at least 20 millimeters uh, wood and cover with the desired material on top. And also I have a plastic sheet, which is a cellophane sheet on top. Uh, I'm not going to remove this cellophane sheet before everything is finished. So it's protecting anything drop on it or anything like a, a stain or something. So the first thing is I like to uh, place this cake on top of here. But if I place this weight on top of this cake in the room temperature, after a while, it will be crack on the side here. And then it's a lot of pressure. Imagine this is only the second tier and there will be more tiers on top of it. So I want to build this cake uh, step by step by using these PVC pipes. These PVC pipes stay in the middle and then take the weight. So how I do that, uh, there's a hole in the middle of this board exact. And I place this cake also in the middle of this board. So, but a couple of millimeters difference, it will get this center uh, road, which is this long treaded, uh, long treaded road. It may be just not in the middle. If it goes, if it goes a little bit on the side, on the side here, there will be more pressure here and then not enough here. So it has to stay almost in the middle. So to measure that, I like to, first of all, uh, before then that, I like to explain you how high is this. So when I place this one here, is see that it's lower than the cake because there is a, a board underneath the cake, extra board underneath the cake. So what I do, I place my, my wooden stick in the middle and then make sure that it don't go anymore. And I put a little mark over here with the pencil and then take it out and exactly uh, clean it up. And after that, I measure that exactly the height. I have to be exact or a little bit lower, but not more than that, because if it's too much, will be the top cake will be turned around. So I did that for this and for that, I have exactly the height of the, uh, the cake except the, the board underneath. So let's place this one in the middle, how we do that. First of all, we have to find out what's the center of the cake. That is the, uh, that's here, 42 and 21 is around there. Let's put it, this one here first. Okay. Yes, and then over here also. 21 that's about there so that's supposed to be the center of the cake I'm gonna push this one down all the way down I have to meet with the center hole of this board I am straight here turn around a little bit make sure it's straight on the other direction too Let's see. Yes, go through. That means this is the point of the uh, cake. I place this in the middle. That's in the middle. Not in the middle. Push a little bit like this. All right. So that means the cake is, this PVC pipe has to be placed inside the cake, exactly this location. So that's a bit of now a uh, mess we will create. So just take uh, your uh, blade and then go millimeter outside. 
and cut this already a little bit room temperature dried uh, fondant. If I push this one now like that, nothing will happen. It will go inside. But what will happen is it creates some cracks. Also, maybe not important because the other cake coming on top. But I just want to make sure that everything is nice and neat. So I will push this one in and don't worry about the cake stays inside. Okay. Right here. And I can take this off now. All right. That's a little bit more than a kick, but it doesn't matter because we can always, uh, if there's a little bit gap around here, we will always cover with something else anyway. Okay, now second thing I like to do, exactly the same thing in here. I have a board underneath, also with hole, so I want to make sure that uh, am I in the middle or not. Don't touch too much on the gold one. 37 and 5, 37 is actually, uh, 37 is 15, 18 and half. Thirty-seven is eighteen and a half. It's around there. Eighteen and a half. It's not there. I have to go slightly this way. Okay. Let's see if it's in the middle or not. Yes, it is. Okay, now, placing it here. Is it in the middle? Check it up. There it is. That sits pretty good. All right. Let's give it a couple of hammer. Good. All right. This cake is now uh, ready to carry the weight. This is also ready to carry the weight. So what we have to do now, place this cake over here. If I go with my hands on it now, and then I place it over here, what's gonna happen? If when I'm removing my hands underneath, all those icings will crack, the gold will drop off, everything will happen. So that's why I will call some help, and then my closest help is my wife, and I will uh, ask her to help me. Now, we're going to place this cake on top of here. And then I have four palette knives. It's the biggest ones I choose. So I need to have these four palette, all of them underneath and balance it together and then place it, the cake over here. So uh, may I introduce you my wife, Jo? She has a big muscle. She uh, exercises every day. Thanks for helping me, darling. <laughs> so please take the two, two uh, palette knife and then when we put it inside here, it has to be crisscrossing. So we have to balance our, our uh, Positioning everywhere. Think about three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, okay? twelve o'clock. No, you are too. Yeah, you have to be more there. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Now, uh, can we do that? So we're gonna place it on, in the middle, but don't remove the palette knife because I'm gonna remove later on. I'm, just, I'm gonna check the centralizing everything. Slowly lift it up. Are we okay? I think so. I mean, if we break this one. Join now. This will be. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. In the in the in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Go go to you, please. To rest you. Okay. Leave the palette knife there, please. Thank you. A little bit cracks, but doesn't really matter. 
you can fix it every time. Thanks a lot, Dan. Okay, so before I, I remove that palette knives, what I like to do, I want to, I want to just check, just check that, uh, is it in the middle? Can I go inside all the way down and I'm meeting the hole underneath? So that's why what I like to do, this is not long enough, so I'm going to go with this one, take this out, take this one out and try to push everything in and then hopefully we're going to meet the hole. Okay, the pallet knife is holding. What I like to do, I have a problem with this now here, so I'm going to try with this one. That's a, a, a knife sharpener, it's got a very sharp end. Okay, one of them is still holding. Yes, got through. Okay. So, let's check here. Not there yet. Yes, we are down. So now I can remove my palette knives. Slight damage on the corner, but this doesn't really big matter because I'm going to fix that anyway later on with some decorations. So next thing now is to place the, of course, the next layer on top of it. Next thing I like to do, I'm going to place my washer and the nut underneath. You know that there's so much, this much of, of this road coming right underneath. I'm going to place this one in and then don't worry about the top yet. So once we complete everything with this, then we're going to tighten up the top one and we will have everything secured properly. So uh, you would maybe ask me why I didn't do this one earlier, because to lift this cake on this height, bring back to here, it will be quite a challenging, very risky job. That's why I want to put two of them together and push this one in together. And also, uh, why can't we do the third one and then after that do this one? Because to find that one, two, three, holes at the same time, maybe it's a bit too difficult. That's why the two is just optimum. Then the third one I'm going to put and place it in like this here. So let's get this one in here. Now, quite a bit of weight involved here. That is good enough. Okay, now I'm going to put it back and place the okay on the turntable. Check. I put some styrofoam legs underneath, so to make sure that is there is a finger space. That's good. So these two cake now on top of each other. Uh, when I look at it, there is a little bit of cracks around here because of the palette knives and everything. So this is always uh, fixable with a little bit of uh, realizing, a bit of like uh, uh, soften up the uh, fondant. You can always pitch it up. The other, also another thing is if you see that the corner that which is really drastic is not really possible to good uh, good job by repairing because we have this all those flowers and, and butterflies and everything coming on. So you select that particular corner to cover it with the, another decorations on it, there will be no problem at the end.
I think I can handle myself the number three. So this is uh, the quilted level. Uh, these cakes are actually uh, produced and the, uh, covered with the fondant at least the day before because you need to have a really firm, uh, dried uh, fondant with a kind of firm cake also inside. So I left it into the room temperature, but at least 19 degrees. So we have a condition here can go for 19 degrees. Uh, if you not have that kind of uh, uh, condition, you have to put in the fridge and you have to deal with the uh, moisture a little bit on the surface. So uh, I have to grab it like this. I have extra board underneath, of course, and there is a hole in the middle of the board. So I have to remove that, that nut. So that one go down, go like this. It doesn't matter because at the end we will, we will squeeze it anyway. So clean hands. Lift up and then fight this one. There is a leg in here. Okay. Slowly. Okay, need a bit of cleaning. I will grab my dry brush and brush everything off and they're ready for the next level. Now we came to the fourth level. Uh, till now, with all those three layers, we will not, uh, I did not really worry about what is the front, what's not the front, etc. But as you see that in the fourth layer, there's a frontal look. There's a decorations in the front, then this must be the front of the cake. So I'll take the opportunity that uh, uh, before I place the fourth one, I will go around and then select the right place where is the front of the cake. So when I turn in like that, I will have no problem at all on this level because it can be any side in the front. When we look at the first level, which is the piping one, it's also, there is no problem at all, except some top parts. But top parts are not really important because we're gonna put some ribbons and cords and everything around. There's gonna no problem at all. Now, when I look at the golden part, because gold is such a very thin coating, any small little crack will be appeared. So when I turn it around, uh, fortunately, there is only one spot here, there's a little bit crack, we can fix it, we can just recoat with the gold on it, we just put a bit of like a, a fond on it or something, but uh, I'm not gonna bother to do that. So I will choose that little crack at the place that which I'm going to put roses and butterflies later on. So this is the 45 degrees here, uh, that, is the that is the spot that roses, maybe it's more frontally like this here, and that is the front of the cake. So I'm going to put one little uh, indication here. It shows that it is the front of the cake and I will not miss it. All right, so that means I have to get now this cake on top and I know which direction to put on. All right, now let's get this one done. First. I can't get my fingers underneath, it's impossible. So I like to make it upside down and place this cake on the, on the uh, on the styrofoam blocks like this, that I can put my fingers underneath. Now, take a big, take a big breath and turn this one in once, like this, just throwing in there, but don't throw too much, otherwise you will have your own disaster. Okay, now, that just happened like that. I think I forgot to emphasize, every cake underneath, there's a three millimeter wood covered, laminated with white cardboard, underneath and on the top. So there's there's no cake touching to the to the wood. And then there's also a pre-hole in the middle, so I can go through this, this, this place. So I will place that little legs underneath here, like that. It's a styrofoam. You can put something else if you like, no problem. Just like this. And place it on top, approximately in the middle. And then hopefully nothing drops. Stop breathing. Like this. 
that's good. All right, so now I can I can grab it. So this is my this is my front. I'm gonna turn this one like that. Okay. Clean hands. I'm grabbing the cake from these fingers underneath, but these two fingers on the side. No damage. Perfect. Now next thing is this one. This is not long enough. This is a little bit shorter. So what will cause that problem? That cake will be sinking because the, the top cake will not going to stop on the surface. It's going to stop more down. So I have to cut. Uh, hold on. I think this is okay because there is a cutboard underneath the cake. There should be okay. Let me measure that again one more time. Just go inside here. Take it out. It's perfect, 100%. I forgot that there's a wood underneath. That's why I was confused a bit. So place this in the middle. And just push. Wow, that's it, perfect. All right, now we have to make a bit of uh, house cleaning. Push this in. That's good. That's the front, look like. All right. Now I have to get the fifth level of the cake here on the table and I'll explain you more things about it. One more layer left, which is the fifth layer. Uh, at this stage, we have to start thinking about the transportation because cake is getting higher and higher. My transportation facility is only 70 centimeter. And when I measure this from, uh, from the level, lower level, from the table to the, to the top of the, this uh, long thread, it's about 65, so it's just, just nice. But if I put one more layer, of course, it's going to be not possible. But at the same time, I have the kind of like obligation to show you exactly how the cake is decorated completely. So I want to do that. That's why I keep my base separate. So if I uh, put this one over here on top like this, all right, I can actually take my uh, nut, which is this one, and then completely squeeze it down, tight, tight, really tighten up. And then I will have, see that this loose, this, this thread is loose now. It will be completely tightened up here and the cake will be all in one piece. So it will be compact together. The only problem is if I use my nut and then tighten up nicely, the wood which is underneath this cardboard sheets is only three millimeters. It's not going to be strong enough. So that's why I put a metal washer inside between the cardboard and the wood. I hide inside that. If you want to have more information about this, how to build all those, all those construction and everything, I have a video called internal support for high cakes. So you can just look at it, have some more information about that. Now, what's happening? I like to keep this, everything together, put together and decorate together, but I want to separate again. So for the transportation. So that's why I'm not going to glue anything together. So let's uh, get this one done, uh, what I'm saying. Uh, there's a metal bar here, which is, uh, I don't want to keep the cake uh, touching here. Even that is safe enough, but I don't want to do that one. So what I like to do first, I'm going to put my, uh, the metal uh, washer is on top. I'll push it in and pull it up and then get this one tightened up first. I'm not going to use any more PVC pipe around this this cake uh, because there's no more uh, much more weight coming on. Just the topper 
so it's not going to be heavy uh, enough to create problems. So I just tighten up nicely. Uh, I'm not really squeezing too much. This is already good enough, right? So at the moment, it's uh, all the PVC pipes inside the cake is touching each other. There is no more pressure on the cakes. Now, uh, let me have to clean again. Okay. Now, again I have the last layer. This one is the fruit cake. I can keep it uh, uh, quite firm here. It doesn't really doesn't matter with temperature. And also, a customer wants to keep it for for an anniversary or something. Uh, I can will lift up over here now to put it in. But if I do that, I will get the cake inside here. That's why I like to protect that. What I do is a, a thick. Uh, a straw for slash. This is just the right size. I think it's a bit, little bit bigger than the uh, M10. It's just right. And I cut this off like this. It's already good. All right. So uh, I'm gonna put this cake on top, and then when I, and also what's happening underneath the cake, there's a board. There's a board with a big hole. Look at this one here. That hole is good enough to take this, pass through this nut. So, I'm going to do this one now. Let me put it back again, I'm going to clean my hands on. Now, at this stage, we have looked at it, if there's a frontal cake here like this, this is the, the, the logo is here. We select the, uh, if there's any imperfection on the other side, uh, planning that uh, putting roses and decorations on to, to cover. In the same time, when we have the chance, when we put this one on, like that, push all the way in here, and then we can take it out again. So this is already just nice. And also look at it. If the cakes, some of the cakes, like some start a little bit higher, and then the other one is to be also balanced. So if you have the cake at this side higher, other one this side higher, so you have to turn around to get this right. But I, as far as I can see over here, there's no problem. I will leave it as it is. The next thing is we're going to put the gazebo on top of the cake. But I'm not going to glue it, as I said. I will put all the decorations on it, but I will make sure that I can separate the gazebo, also this cake, for transportation. All the heavy liftings are now finished. What's left with the lifting is tomorrow we have to lift everything together. So, uh, obviously and honestly, I can't do that myself, uh, even with my wife together. So, I called some friends and we will be four all together to lift up bring it to the transportation vehicle and go straight to the venue. Uh, it's about uh, 25 kilometers, I believe. So it will be no problem at all. Okay, now uh, what's left here, I like to place my gazebo on the uh, top of the cake and then also uh, work on some coverage. So I like to cover all those gaps between two cakes. Every time when the cake comes on top of the other one, there will be gap around. So we use uh, different methods to close that, like maybe sometimes ribbon, sometimes cord, sometimes piping. So I will do different things on each, each level. I will make a white ribbon here, and I will do also a white ribbon here. And then I will do gold cord here, and also gold cord here, and gold ribbon also here. So you will see that soon. Uh, I'd like to show you something quite interesting. Uh, as you see on the plane, I will put butterflies around the cake, like a parading around the cake. So uh, there is two butterflies comes on top of the gazebo here. Uh, I did some work, but solved a lot of problem. So there's a hard surface here on the uh, gazebo, and then the butterfly is also hard. So to join them together in just a little one dot, it's not gonna be really secure way to join it together, just dot to dot. So what I do, I put, just let me show you here. You see here, a little dots. So this one, I made it in about two, three seconds. Just roll a little ball of pastillage and stick over here with the egg white and some bit of uh, royal icing around and let it dry completely. So that before the pastillage get too dry, I actually take one of the butterfly, just push it in this corner. I get the exact indentation from the lower part of the butterfly. So later on to glue the butterfly over here, it will be no problem at all. So by doing this about two second work, it will solve a lot of problems. Uh, while we're joining the butterflies on these edges. Okay, now I like to put it on. So uh, that is the front of the gazebo. 
and this is the front side of the cake so I'm just gonna lift up here slowly carefully so it's completely dry so no problem as long as you not knock somewhere it will be nothing happened so I just place it here make sure that is in the middle I think it's pretty straight go like this this I want okay all right I will leave it like this then later on we will separate it okay now let me just show you how do I close that I have different kind of ribbons here one of them is the white ribbon it's a cloth ribbon always cut off the first square, first circle because it can be dusty or a little bit uh, dirty so just go around Okay, I'm going to use relaxing to do that. So just at the back of the cake, dot of relaxing here, and a dot, another dot on top, and then glue it together. This is only for temporary because I'm going to remove again. I just use that, just a little small dot. So that's already covered that gap. Second one also with white uh, ribbon. That's pretty permanent. Uh, I just use a little bit more relaxing here. Mm, that's a problem here. It has to be go underneath. So what I like to do, I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to use gold cord around here. So by using gold cord, gold cord is uh, something that which is uh, could be quite uh, annoying because at the end is just like uh, this all the whiskers coming out. So I have to secure that with a bit of uh, sticky tape. Just go around of it, and I cut from the middle. All right, then go around. When the cord meets at the, at the end, just put your sticky tape in the middle of this uh, cutting. Eventually, we'll cut the spot. So, put it on top of each other and then cut exactly from the spot so that all those whiskers doesn't come out. A bit of realizing here. Halfway through and the other side. That's it. Some little dot here, I can cover that also. Good. So that's already good enough. Uh, there's a lot of decorations on this cake, so you don't have to be really too fancy about that. Uh, next one, again, the gold cord. That's also worked out. Now, when it comes to that point, that where the gold surface, I'm going to use first the gold ribbon, like that here, to make it much more cleaner. I just start from there here. That's the back. No, that's the back. All right.
that's it. Uh, there's, I think, nothing else need as a uh, ribbons or cord or whatever. That's already clean enough. Uh, I'm sure you realize that I put a little bit of rail icing around here to fix that little cracks. Uh, that cake pressurized that cake a little bit too much. I think I cut this PVC a bit too low. Uh, it could be a little bit higher. It will be better. All right. Uh, so far, so good. I think what we should do now, we have to start with the putting gold rajas here. So I'm using a, a royal icing because white to white it's not going to be seen much. All right. Just what I do is like a, a, I'm not going to go too much on the edge here. It's one, two, three, four, five. So I see the five is royal icing is not drying. I will increase the number maybe six or seven. So that's good. That's good. That's good. Four and five. Okay, next one I make six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is the pens. How uh, dry is the room, how cold is the room, and then how much is the uh, strength of your royal icing that how quickly get dry, so that you have to measure if you want to make it fluently without any disturbance or without interruption, you have to count that, how many you need to do. I did six, I'll continue with the six, I think six is good. So I'm sure you don't want to watch me the whole cake I finish with drudges. So I'm going to stop shooting now and get back to you when this whole thing is finished. My next step is placing the roses on the cake. As you uh, may remember that uh, on the plant we have three locations. One is the, as you see, over here coming down. And the second one is, is here coming down. And then the third one also here. And it starts from the large one, a little bit smaller, and then the smallest one here. So uh, normally uh, what people do, they, they, this kind of cascade of roses, uh, it's another way of doing it, like you wire everything and together into one, uh, one uh, sort of bouquet. Uh, and then you place the whole lot in once on the cake. Uh, it's a tradition that because people take it out and keep it and maybe just frame them, whatever. Uh, but I, I'm not going to do that because of two reasons. First of all, uh, too much time consuming, and then uh, people doesn't want to uh, pay that time. So another thing is like uh, uh, I don't like to use too much wires on the cake. So that's why. Uh, but at the same time, I like to create a kind of variety of sizes of the roses. It looks much better. So that's why I asked my wife to do all the roses for me, Joe, and then uh, uh, she make two wired roses on two large, uh, two large uh, bouquet and then one more wire rose on the top. It should be more than enough. Everything else is the normal uh, fondant roses that you have another video to, to watch and learn how to do those roses. So uh, ivory roses with uh, green but it's very light green so it's actually we did the ivory and we add just a dot of green and just to change the tone a little bit. Uh, I don't want to appear any green uh, on the cake. It's, it's not going to make any sense. So. Uh, instead of doing this wiring bouquets, we're going to glue all the roses just with chocolate on the surface of the cake and create that kind of feeling that is actually is a kind of like a spread that has been done all together. So I'm going to use white chocolate and I'm going to use also a bit of a cooler. That's a liquid air. So when I spray it on the spot that I'm using chocolate, it will uh, immediately set and I continue with my work. I will advise you something. Uh, if you have uh, roses bouquets like this, arrange them all on the surface like that. So as you see that, I know exactly how many I'm going to use and then I don't have to look at again what I have to use. So it's already, I will, I will organize that, make this bouquet on the surface and transform this one by one on the cake. It will 
a lot of uh, easier uh, method that to do this way instead of going on the kick and start doing it one by one. So this is my second bouquet and this is my third bouquet. So as you have seen that I have done one uh, because I always study first before I show you something. If I have any problem I will solve it before, I, before then I show you. So there is no problem at the moment. I'm going to do the second one in front of you. Let's get these roses here first. This side. That's the bouquet I'm going to need. And that's the spot that I like to do that. Just here, that area. So at the end of today, I want to create that S kind of uh, looking with the flow of the roses. So I start from this corner. I want to have uh, one wired rose here, right here. The roses are wired and then also uh, we put a, a strip of white plastic uh, tape around the fit so it doesn't go uh, anything in, in the cake. Then I put next one here. That looks good. I'm actually just dipping that roses into the chocolate here. Uh, every time I want to put one rose, I place it first. I see that positioning just a bit too large. I'm going to put this one here. And then also that rose has got platform underneath. You have to select the right, right place, like this. I dip generously, but I'm not dipping too many times. Only once clean dip, and then just make sure that there's no dripping. And then just go back here and then push a little bit on the surface, a little bit. And after that, use that one here. Let it go. That's right. Now, you have to go one by one. So next thing is, I like to put one big rose here. There it is. White chocolate. It's a very good glue, especially uh, using ivory roses on the white surface. I mean, you won't use that dark chocolate in this area, isn't it? So this doesn't make sense. So one by one, you place the rose and see if the size is correct or not, and then continue. I think this one can go here. No, too big. This one. No, too big. Grab something smaller here. Like this, all right. Very good. I want to make this flow here, right, right here. So I'm going to continue with smaller roses. Uh, there's one. Beautiful. I'm going to continue a bit more here. Definitely can come this one. There. I want you to realize that I'm putting roses in the way that uh, actually all the stems of the roses is meeting somewhere behind the cake. So it's just like this is here and then not everyone in the same direction. It goes here and there and there and there and there. So this one goes this way, this one goes this way. It's like a, if you put the stick in the middle of the rose, it goes like an explosion around.
All right, it's coming up nicely now. Uh, I'd like to see one more time what else I can do here. I just want to put one more of this. One more of this, this mix well. Don't forget, we will have still leaves coming in. You can cover all those gaps with the leaves after that. That's good. All right, one more here. This one. I'm applying quite a bit of force on the rose, so that's why better to do these roses a few days before, nice and nice and uh, sort of firm, that you can apply force, you can push it. That flow is okay. Uh, one more here. Now I like to put these ones. So this is single, single, uh, single petal. Just a roll around, and then makes it like a, the sharp edge here. It makes a, a lots of uh, beauty at the end of the bouquet. Good. All right, a little bit more here, just a couple of small ones. Then pretty much we come to the end of this bouquet. All right, that looks beautiful, and uh, I like to put now a couple of leaves. Leaves again that you just look at uh, MTRS. You don't have to use too many. Not everywhere, you have to really see where it's nice matching. Beautiful. So let's start with another one here. So because this cake is going to stay till here, this one removed. So I'm going to make a bouquet here, but I'm not going to touch uh, to the much to the uh, gazebo because gazebo also will separate it. So I'm just going to start from here and do one small bouquet over here. Pretty much the, all the bouquets of flowers the same. So we place the one large flower in the middle or two large flowers in the middle, and after that you fill up the, all the interiors by looking at the directions of the flower going into like a, uh, according to the meeting at the bottom somewhere uh, that is like an explosion look like. So I think I can put one more rose over here just to finish off that edge. That's it. As I said, I shouldn't connect anything with the gazebo. Gazebo has to be free. I think it's still okay, no problem. So now it's the Time for long-weighted uh, butterflies to place down. I'm going to stick now two butterfly on the top 
uh, on the gazebo uh, on top of this uh, platform that I prepared before and then after that I'm going to put two here, two here and two here so uh, of course my height is not, uh, I'm not tall enough so I just go over the uh, milk crate hopefully I don't fall off on the, on the cake so it will be very funny anyway so what I do is, uh, because the chocolate has given me instantaneous uh, contact and, and glue and standing in the one spot, I'm going to glue with a dot of chocolate and after that uh, I'm going to just uh, 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 weld around with the royal icing that you don't see it. Royal, when royal icing dries, everything much more stronger. Just a dot of chocolate here. All right. I like to take this one. Just grab from the strong corners. That doesn't really, you don't touch any of these uh, lace designs. Hold it like this. holding. I have to put a little bit more chocolate. Stay. Stay. Good. Just a bit of chocolate here. A bit of coolness. Stays. So I let I don't touch anymore. I just let the chocolate set a little bit. And I'm gonna put the next one here now. Mm. When I'm gluing this, it was a bit of struggle because I didn't uh, do the chocolate uh, before. So the best way is now it's a better idea. Just to put a little bit of chocolate over here first and then just put it very very thin just smear it there all right and let it this one set and then next one you take it in the hand whatever you want the glue and also put a little bit of chocolate here wherever you want the glue just about here okay also let it set just a few minutes okay once this one set this one set the third amount of chocolate in between these two set chocolate it will go it in no time That's good, it's standing. Now I will give about a few seconds that don't disturb anymore. Then after that I'm going to start welding around the uh, edges with the rising. When it's dry it will be completely dry and completely secure, no problem. I can start from this one actually with the rising. Where is my rising here? Okay. The other butterflies would be no problem because I have a stick to, to join the, in the cake, no problem at all. Uh, 
I'm going to leave this one like this. I'm not going to take anything away. So make sure that it is now nice and solid. Good. Next couple is here. Next couple have to go in between the roses. So I have to just find the right spot. I think uh, there is a gap over here in between three rows. I can place this one on. I want to have the two butterflies looking at each other. So this one look downwards. This is a fruit cake. It just goes through the, all the fruits. It will be quite solid. That's good. I don't want to push too much. Uh, next one has to go in between here. So flow that, that, that kind of thing. Over here. Butterflies could be in direction, so I just do it like this. Yeah. Beautiful. That really works out. So look at the difference now. The cake is now coming more elaborate. Next two. If I look at the cake from this direction, this is the front of the cake. So I have to imagine where the butterfly is coming at. I want to have one right here and then one right underneath here. So this is the right location here. So that's why I want to put this one actually downwards like this, like this. I have to find a way to do that here. Yes. Don't push from the wings because otherwise it will be wrecked. So you have to push it. Uh, I think it's a too long because it's like touching somewhere inside. Take it out again and cut off a little bit. Don't snap it because snap will be vibrate the butterfly will break. Just to break it, just slightly push here and break it. That is compressed paper actually. This uh, cake pop sticks. Let's go. That's right. And the next one is here. I need to have direction here like this. That's better. All the way can touch to the roses. One more turn. Okay, I have to look at now the cake all together. Stand like this, like that, and then after that, like that. So that is kind of up. Here's one. Here's one. Just right here. Then I have to go inside there. Okay, next one, that's the front, has to be here, there. there, yes, it 
tab is broken. Oh, I can put it back, no problem at all. Just a little one here. Okay, so far that a uh, butterfly is in place. We have one more surprise attachment left. I make some spikes, but uh, I like to have this like uh, addition to the flow a little bit. So I did similar to the uh, butterfly uh, antennas, but much more larger. So I want to add this one for a last addition to the to the flow, and then just ent enhance it for a last step. Okay. Uh, these are the spikes that I'm talking about. The, I done this a couple of hours ago out of pastillage. So you cannot make it out of fondant or out of relaxing because you need to really strength that uh, we just roll the pastillage from tick to tin and then also cut stripes from tick to tin and then it's actually like just a squarish uh, and you bend it while the pastillage is too soft. So I thought it's a good finishing touch. It represents the, uh, the wing uh, wind of the of sort of wind of the wings of the butterfly so uh, it's just I think it's elegant so I did already a couple of them I want to add the last few in front of you just dip the end bit a little bit of uh, in chocolate and then you, of course you have to uh, first position and see where you want to put so I decided to put this one around here just right here uh, just uh, like this finish uh, last one, I like to put here in the front, like that here. That's it. Okay. The only challenge left is the delivery tomorrow. Obviously, I can't lift up myself, even with my strong wife, so we will be four to lift. I hope this whole behind the scene experience was educational for you and will add some comfort to your next big project. That's all for today, guys. God bless you all. Stay cool and happy. Till to the next video. Bye for now.